We got two cells right there that are fully capped. Oh, lovely. They're gonna send out multiple swarms. Ooh, I think they already swarmed. I don't see any eggs in here. Oh, yeah. That really sucks. Well, I'm soaking wet. The bees weren't happy. It started pouring down rain right when I was in the middle of that hive looking for the queen so I can make these splits. So, thank you, Mother Nature. <laughs> Man, yesterday sure was interesting. I was not expecting all of the hives to build up that quickly. Like I said, I had just split them um, not too long ago, just a few weeks ago, and now they're already up to the size where they're wanting to swarm. That storm was <laughs> very, very wet yesterday. Also was not expecting that. Um, definitely felt the cold front coming in from it. It is now in the 40s today and yesterday was in the 60s, which kind of sucks. But that makes it perfect weather for splitting because then the bees aren't going to be out and about and they're going to be in the hive instead. So let's finish up our tasks. I was not wanting to split all of these hives quite yet just because we are going to get a cold spell actually starting now. It is in the 40s right now. That storm that we had yesterday brought in quite the cold front and it's supposed to get back down to 35 at nighttime, which is a little chilly, um, especially since some of these are going to have to go into little jester nukes. But because they're already preparing a swarm, I kind of have no choice. So we're going to see how all that goes. But I'm only going to be doing the ones that have already started swarm preparations. I'm going to wait on the ones that haven't yet and let them keep building up in strength. And as soon as that cold front is done, then we're going to go all in and start doing a ton of splits. Because that is when the, the main flow is going to be right around the corner. This bee suit smells pretty terrible now after getting soaked yesterday. It smells like a mix between um, that burnt banana smell that the, the bees let off whenever they are in attack mode and a mix between just nasty funk. So hopefully they don't smell me and say, oh my gosh, we have an intruder and start freaking out. I'm going to try to smoke myself a little bit and see if that helps. But okay where to start <laughs> i guess we're gonna start right here we've been having quite a bad woodchuck problem we had a woodchuck get into our garage yesterday and tear apart a lot of our equipment and eat away the comb and we left these out in a hurry last night obviously they were covered and everything and when i got here their woodchuck just flung them all over the place and nodded the comb so that is lovely but uh, I guess that's just the name of the game <laughs> when you work with animals. Right. I was in this hive yesterday when it started storming and pouring down rain and oh my gosh, was it mad. Um, was definitely not expecting it to rain like that. I was head first into this hive right when it started downpouring and I was like, okay, just finish it, find the queen, finish up, and then get out of here as quickly as possible. But then I couldn't find the queen and all the bees were bubbling outside the hive. So I just said, screw it, threw all the frames back in there and figured I'd try again today. So they're probably not gonna be happy that I keep getting into their hive and causing all the ruckus, but what do you do? <laughs> Luckily, it is, like I said, in the 40s, so I see a little bit of activity at the front of the highs, but not a whole lot. So this is actually the perfect time to be doing splits. I'm gonna get some really good splits um, because they're not flying as much. Um, so that when I put them in there, they don't all fly away either, which is exactly what I want. <laughs> Probably gonna have to put some sugar water on these girls and another pollen patty for this next cold spell. Um, actually, that'd probably be an amazing idea. I might do that tomorrow. Make them tonight, put it on tomorrow. Or maybe I'll put them on tonight. But that way they still have a really good food source coming in during the cold spell so that they continue to build up for the flow. So I'm looking for the queen. 
I'm going to be putting her in the frame she's on in all of these nukes. And I'm also going to be putting in one brood frame, one resource frame, and then two empty frames. Um, and then maybe a couple shakes of bees just so that they have enough to uh, carry that queen over during that cold spell. Uh, but since I'm adding the queen in there, I want to give her empty space to be able to lay. Otherwise, she's just going to want to swarm again anyways. So that will be the plan. Might be time to start putting some honey supers on these girls. They're crowding out the brood nest with, uh, with quite a bit of nectar already. So that could also be part of why they're wanting to swarm already. And then also rotating frames like I did two weeks ago really kickstarted them to make them want to swarm. They built them up stupid fast. Yeah, look at this brood pattern. Is that not the most beautiful brood pattern? Oh my gosh, beautiful. I always wondered why they have empty cells like that in the middle. And my theory is that maybe these are just cells that they like to store food in. Cause I noticed they always put honey and pollen and stuff in them. And I wonder if they're almost like food reserves for the brood as they're feeding it, um, as it's producing and whatnot. I don't know, just a theory of mine. All right, this is a perfect resource frame. It's got a little bit of root on it too, but also has quite a bit of honey. So I'm gonna give him this. And I might give him this to build out. So building it out kind of funky. I don't like that. We'll see, let me see what's in here first. Oh, chill. Another beautiful brood frame. Can't really tell because there's so many bees on it, but she's got this coated. Wow, both sides. Look at her. Look at that coloring. That is absolutely beautiful. I like her. Okay, I want to leave eggs in this hive. And this frame has some young larvae on it and some eggs. So I'm actually gonna take her and put her on a different frame and put her in there. So, and I'm gonna shake these bees in there with her too. So I need some empty comb. All right, there she is. Got her on an empty frame in that hive for her to keep laying. And she was actually very calm, I was impressed. And this frame is filled with eggs, so that's why I wanted to take her off so I could leave this frame because they're gonna have to draw out a queen, so they need eggs in order to do that. Um, so I wanna leave them as many options as possible. Of course, they're gonna Nancy. <laughs> I'm gonna give them this to draw out. Just need one brood frame with lots of bees and one empty frame. And then I'm gonna put one shake of bees in there and call it good. Okay, gonna shake these bees in there too. Okay, one down, five more to go. So far this year has been going absolutely great for bees and beekeepers. It is now May 14th and I'm finally editing this video, but we have finally hit our main flow. The bees are bringing in crazy, crazy amounts of nectar and pollen. Honestly, they don't even have enough room in the whole entire hive for all of the resources that they're bringing in. Like you see all this propolis? They caked this in here, all around it, just caked on. Mm -hmm. um, but they're growing really, really fast because of it. 
and we are finally able to start doing some really big grafting frames. Casey is phenomenal at grafting. I don't even know how he does it, but that is definitely a skill set, and he has absolutely mastered it. We're on our third round of grafts, and so far, the last two, he's been getting around 95%, which is absolutely beautiful, um, because it was a little shaky there back in April when we were getting those cold spells. We weren't really able to do much grafting. So we're now starting to look at a point where we're going to have way too many queens and we can actually manage. So keep an eye out for an announcement as there will be nukes available sometime in June. We're hoping maybe around June 10th or the following week, um, June 17th. Um, and we're also going to start having some queens available too. Um, but I'll keep you guys posted on that as we continue to grow the apiary. We're up to 88 hives now, which again is absolutely crazy. And I definitely would not be able to do it without him. So I am so, so thankful to have him as my partner. There she is. Ooh, and they're already starting to starve her. She's getting skinny. Which means they're getting her ready to swarm soon. So see how she looks skinnier than the other one? It might be kind of hard to tell, but she has definitely been being starved so that she can swarm. Another beautiful queen though. All right, now the fun part. You gotta catch her and she looks like she's a fast one. Uh oh guys, it must be tick season. I just found a tick that was hanging out on my veil right here. Um, so watch out guys and make sure you have somebody take, uh, check you for ticks. <laughs> Like, okay, so I just smoked them, but it is so crazy to me just how strong these hives still are after I already split them. Like, both boxes are like this. It is blowing my mind. Somehow I'm missing her. Okay, so I accidentally opened up one of these drone brood. Do you see those little white things in there? That's Varroa, guys. That's a male and some babies. Ah. That's lovely. Ah, I've never seen that before. That is actually really cool to see, but also I don't want to see. Shows how strong these colonies are. The fact they're making so much drone comb, though. I mean, they're already obviously strong because they're wanting to swarm, but the drone comb also. Oh, there she is. I knew I was just missing her. That's usually how it goes. All right, let's see if I can catch her. Where did I put my frame? Right here. Okay, finally got all the rest of them finished. Got the queens taken out and put in, in all of these jester nukes. I'm gonna take some of them home because since we are getting a cold spell, I'm a little bit wary on having jesters outside because they're not really insulated. All they are is wax cardboard. So if I have to, I'll put them inside on my front porch <laughs> um, just so that they make it through the cold spell at least. And I really need to get rid of this queen. Um, it was way worse, but I haven't even touched this hive. Literally, I just walk up to it and they start bubbling out. They are just not fun to deal with whatsoever. But was able to find all the queens. They were definitely difficult to find. I had to go over the comb probably three times just to find her. They were very skittish today, but it is kind of cold and it starts drizzling a little bit here and there, but all that matters is we got them done. So I have no idea how many hives I even have now. Um, gonna have to wait for some queen cells we made, for the queens we made it and whatnot, but things are going pretty good and I think that's it for me today. I will see you guys soon.